Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. Uh, on this video I'm going to talk about a special kind of similar triangles kind of problem I call the bow tie uh, problem. Uh, now keep in mind here this says part 6. Uh, you need to have watched at least these two videos uh, before you can probably understand what I'm doing on, on this uh, part 6 video. And if you need to watch those videos go to my website dowsehouse.com look under um, uh, geometry lessons under these titles and you can find them. And so if you're having a hard time with this lesson make sure you watch those videos. Uh, but anyways, uh, this uh, it says bow tie here because uh, these two similar triangles look like they make a bow tie. I've got a triangle FDY. FDY is kind of similar to triangle PDR. PDR, they're sharing a vertex here, and so they're basically like touching each other. And uh, it looks like we have a bow tie. Uh, now keep in mind here, this person's uh, kind of small for this big old bow tie, uh, but that's the idea here. Uh, and and since this is a, a similar triangles problem, um, these two triangles have these characteristics where corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional. Uh, but it's a bow tie problem, and so there's an additional feature here. Uh, it says bow tie problems will always have a pair of parallel sides. And if you look here, there's an arrow on this side, an arrow on this side. These two sides are parallel to each other because these arrows tell me that they're parallel. If there weren't arrows here, I can't say they're parallel just because they look like they are. But since I have arrows, I can say that these sides are parallel. And so keep that in mind. And so that's going to be useful. Uh, and so we're going to use those parallel sides to help us figure out which uh, angles correspond to each other, which will then help us set up the proportion to find the, the missing side here. And so on this problem here, well, we're going to end up eventually trying to figure out what this side is. Uh, and so let's move on to uh, solving this problem. It says, if triangle FDY is similar to triangle PDR, we need to find x. So my goal again is to figure out what is the length of this side right here. Uh, and to do that, we're going to set up a proportion, comparing uh, the small triangle on the left uh, to the big triangle on the right. And so we have a small triangle and a big triangle. Uh, and I set up my proportions s over b, small over big. Uh, but you could do big over small if you wanted to. And so I need to plug in x in here. Well, x is the small. But which of these sides on the right one, on the big triangle, go with the x? Uh, some of you might see it, but some of you might not. Uh, I'm going to look at this statement. Triangle FDY is similar to triangle PDR. Since F and P come first, I know that these two angles are congruent. D and D come second. That's a little confusing, but they are talking about these angles right here. Keep in mind, we have two triangles here. So this is the angle on this triangle. This is the angle on that triangle. Uh, and so that's what they're talking about. Uh, I'll mention why these are uh, congruent here in a moment. And then y and r come third in that statement. And so we know that uh, right now that these angles uh, correspond to each other uh, and, and are congruent. And now these angles are congruent to each other because we have two lines intersecting. These are actually uh, vertical angles. And I've, I've got a video on that on my website if you need to look under vertical angles. Uh, but what if your teacher wasn't that nice? And they didn't give you this statement. They just said, hey, we've got two triangles that are similar. Find x. Uh, there's an alternative way of finding this. Uh, and, and I'm going to focus on these parallel sides now. So I'm going to uh, focus on this parallel side and this parallel side here. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go uh, to the uh, angle uh, relationships with parallel sides video I have. Uh, but notice I've got two parallel sides. And this is a transversal. Transversal is a line that crosses two or more lines. So uh, in this case, I'm highlighting these sides of these triangles. And if I look at it, this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles. Uh, and so since these are inside the parallels, opposite sides of the transversals, uh, I know these angles are congruent to each other. And so that's something that uh, you might need to know on these kind of problems. Now, if I look over at the other side here from y to r, that whole line, that is another transversal. And so since we have, a, again, parallel lines and a transversal, these angles here are going to be congruent to each other because that's another example of alternate interior angles. And so these parallel lines are giving me a lot of information. Uh, and, and that's useful if I don't have this statement up here. Uh, and then finally, we know these guys are equal in the middle here because these are uh, vertical angles. And so from right now, I now know which angles uh, are congruent to each other. And so now I can start figuring out how to plug in the numbers into this equation here. And so we're looking, looking at y. y is opposite, uh, sorry, x is opposite of, of y, which has two arcs. And if I look at r, r also has two arcs, so these angles are congruent. And so I know that 15 and x correspond with each other. So 15 is going to go on the bottom here. Again, corresponding sides have to go up and down. And then we need another number here from the small triangle. Well, let's look at 7. 7 
is opposite the one arc. P has one arc, and there's no number here. And so since I don't have a number here, I can't use 7. 7 was given uh, just to kind of mess with you. And so you can't use 7 in here because I can't do 7 and then have nothing here. That doesn't work out. And so that's uh, bad information, uh, misleading information. Now let's look at the, the 8. 8 is opposite the 3 arcs. Uh, 12 is opposite the 3 arcs. So I can now use, since I have numbers here, 8 is going to go on top for, for small. Uh, 12 is going to go on the bottom for big. I now have enough information to cross multiply and solve for x. So I'm going to do that right now. Uh, x times 12 is, is 12x. 15 times 8. Now 12x is going to stay 12x. 15 times 8 is actually 120. And if I'm going to isolate this x here, divide by 12, and I get x is 10. So if I look here, we know this x is 10. And if I plug that in here, 10, if I were to do 10 times 12, that's 120. Or 15 times 8, that's 120. Also, this would reduce down to a fraction of 2 thirds. This also reduces down to a fraction of 2 thirds. So either way you do it, you still get that these equal out each other. And so we know that 10 is absolutely correct. Uh, but let's move on to a problem that's a little bit more challenging this. Uh, it says, find x. These triangles are similar. Ooh, I don't have a statement telling me which angles go with each other. Uh, but keep in mind here, I still have these parallel lines here indicating which sides are parallel. And so I'm going to automatically know that these angles are congruent uh, because these are vertical angles. And then if I look uh, at this line and this line, those are parallel. And this transversal, that's pointing uh, to this angle and this angle being congruent to each other. And then also, I've got another transversal happening here. And so parallel lines in a, a transversal, these angles are also alternate interior angles, so they're also equal to each other. And so that's going to be useful in solving this problem. And so my goal is to solve for x. And so I've got the small triangle on the, on the right, the big triangle on the left. I'm going to do small over big here. And I'm going to end up setting a proportion where x is going to be in the equation. Uh, now x is opposite the one arc. Opposite the one arc on the other triangle is 18. So I know x is going to go on the top, and 18 is on the bottom. Again, this is small over big. So eight, uh, x on top, 18 on the bottom. Uh, now, if we look here, we've got numbers all the way around here. And so I should be able to solve this problem using any one of these numbers now. So if I go opposite the 3 arcs is the 24. Opposite 3 arcs here is, is 4. And so I now have a 4 over 24. And so I now have enough information to solve this. Uh, and so you could have also done 5 and 30. You could have done, uh, instead of doing 4 and 24, you could have done 5 and 30. And you still would have gotten the same answer. You're welcome to do that, but I'm not going to do it on this video. Uh, but I just happened to choose 4 and 24 because, I don't know, 4 I like better than 5 maybe. I don't know. And so I'm going to cross multiply right now. x times 24. So that's uh, 24x. Uh, 18 times 4. And if I do 24x uh, is going to stay the same. 18 times 4 is 72. And if I divide both sides here by 24, I get x is 3. And so in this case here, x is 3. And again, if you want to double check it, plug it in here. Uh, 3 times 24 is 72. 18 times 4 is 72. Or you can just reduce the fractions down. You would get 1 over 6 equals 1 over 6. Uh, and since uh, I've got a little bit more time here, I might as well solve this using the other numbers. And so I'm going to use this x and 18 like I did before. But I'm going to use the 30 and 5. I'm just going to prove that these are still going to get you the same answer. So opposite the two arcs here is this 30. Uh, so let me uh, uh, make a little square here or a rectangle. Opposite the uh, two arcs here is the 5. And so I'm going to use 5 and 30 here. And if I cross multiply, x times 30 is 30x. 18 times 5 is, is 90. Divide both of these by 30. And I still get x is 3 in this case. Uh, so again, I just want to show uh, that you could, let me change this around here. That was kind of ugly. X is, is 3 here. And so either way, no matter which side I used here, I still got the same answer for x. Hopefully this helps you understand how to do these kinds of problems, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.